psychologist and attorney, Dr. Cyril Wecht. Welcome to the show, Dr. Wecht. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this hyoid bone, because there was a case in 2008, uh, an inmate named Ronnie L. White, uh, who purportedly hung himself. Then it turned out because of the exact same fracture, his death was ruled a homicide. How critical of a finding is this in the medical examiner's report? Hyoid bone fractures uh, are indeed rare in cases of a suicidal hanging in an extensive study done from the medical examiner's office in Montreal, 239 cases over a six-year period of apparent suicides. Uh, there were only six in which the hyoid bone was fractured. And that gave me uh, much pause from the first time that I heard about it. And that is something that is generally found with manual strangulation, not even with a ligature strangulation. And now, of course, we're hearing that there were fractures of the cervical vertebral column, and that uh, presents a different scenario. If indeed he hurled himself or was hurled off the top bunk, then you have the uh, speed, the velocity coming in that can impart the kind of force that would be required to produce fractures of both the hyoid bone and the cervical vertebral column. Um, so we've got the different scenarios, and we have to learn more about it. And as you mentioned, there are other things uh, to look at uh, the absence of cameras, the uh, withdrawal of suicide watch, uh, why was Tartaglione, his uh, ex cop uh, jailmate, charged with four murders, removed from his cell um, uh, the day before. Um, these are things that have to be thoroughly, thoroughly. And even if he hurled himself off, are there still a lot of questions? Again, uh, was he goaded? Was he encouraged? Uh, was he, uh, you know, told, like I know, uh, uh, prosecutors and, and law enforcement officers sometimes like to do uh, when they try to get somebody. No, uh, if, if, someone, if to... someone aided in his suicide or if this was, in fact, a uh, homicide, wouldn't there be physical evidence left on his body? Well, there might well be. And we have to see the complete autopsy report. We have to learn about the injuries external and the uh, injuries internal. Um, we want to know how many hemorrhages there were in these little muscles in the neck and the soft tissues. Microscopic examination, what are the ages of it? Do any of them relate back to the July 23rd incident? Are they all fresh? Um, so these are the things that we have to learn from the autopsy report. And uh, they have to, of course, correlate their findings with what they learned from the investigators. And until that's all put together, and everybody who had access uh, to Epstein in that jail who could have gotten into the cell, including even people who may not have been on duty, but who still had that kind of uh, accessibility. Uh, I believe every one of them should be individually and separately interrogated. This is, as you've said, a, a terrible case. And no matter what you think about Epstein, that's not the point. This is not the way things should be handled in prisons in America. And as you know so well, this, of course, is a prison that is housed People like Gotti and Bernard Sadoff and recently El Chapo. We're not talking about a one-cell uh, little uh, rinky-dink jail in East Podunksville uh, somewhere in, in the rural America. Yeah.